welcome to Collaboration in SchoolNet, another self-paced SchoolNet course delivered via Nesis, Canvas, and Homebase. This video is also available on our YouTube channel, so welcome to our viewers there as well. This course is an overview of the opportunities for collaboration within SchoolNet. From simple classroom assessments to district benchmarks and item banks, there are many opportunities for educators and other school personnel to work together in SchoolNet to lead their students to mastery. I'm John Mars, your SchoolNet product manager and professional learning specialist on the home base team in the Digital Teaching and Learning Division here at NCDPI. SchoolNet provides a variety of collaboration tools. Today, we'll focus on how educators can collaborate on classroom assessments, school or district level benchmarks, and item banks. To start, educators can work together to create classroom assessments, then pull their own copies of the collaborative assessment to administer to their students. Educators can also collaborate with school or district leadership to create both school level and district level benchmarks. Finally, Teachers and school or district leaders can build shared item banks together, authoring or editing items that fit their particular school community. As we go through these features, please feel free to either follow along with me on screen or use the SchoolNet training site. The login information for the SchoolNet training site can be found on screen, on the Canvas page right below this video, and in the YouTube video description. Educators can very easily collaborate on assessments using the co-authoring feature. Before we dive in, a few quick housekeeping items, especially for those of you who have been SchoolNet users for many years now. In the past, teachers had to request an additional role from school or district leadership called Access for Teachers to Share Assessments. This was an older collaboration feature in SchoolNet, and it does still work. However, in this course, we'll only be discussing the newer co-authoring feature. Support for legacy shared classroom assessments may be dropped in future versions of SchoolNet. The newer co-authoring feature does not require additional roles, adds additional flexibility, and allows for sharing very similar to Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. Another important note, co-authored assessments have their own area in SchoolNet. You won't find them in the assessment dashboard, also known as Test Central. When educators create a co-authored assessment, it lives in the co-authoring area of SchoolNet. To administer the assessment, teachers would need to create their own copy of the co-authored assessment for their classes. This allows teachers to continue to access and modify the co-authored assessment without affecting already scheduled assessments or submitted test results. Directly moving the test from co-authoring to the assessment dashboard would lock out other co-authors and make it more difficult to modify the test in the future. Finally, when using SchoolNet co-authoring, keep in mind that only one user can actively edit the test at a time. It is not possible for two or more users to edit the test at the same time like it is in Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive. The first user must close the test before the second user can begin editing the test. Just keep this in mind as you consider how this feature might be useful in your school or district. Without further ado, let's jump into SchoolNet. In the left-hand navigation, we'll want to expand the Assessments category and then head to the Test Co-Authoring area. All co-authored tests will live on this page. A good first step for Test Co-Authoring is to use folders to help organize and manage access to other shared assessments. We'll start by clicking Create New at the top right, and then Create a Folder. This will take us to the Create a Folder screen. The first thing you'll want to do is give your folder a name. For today, I'll be a ninth grade English teacher, maybe, who's working on some English assessments with other English teachers in my district. And now we'll add users. We're just going to add one of my teachers for now. They're a friend of mine in another high school in the district. They go by Teacher3401 in the system. I'll type their name in, and the system will search for users by that name. In the real school net, you would just type in the other teacher's name, and it would find them. Once the system finds results, it'll pop up a little pop-up window with all the results. Click on the correct teacher in that pop-up, and they'll be added to the folder. 
Note that you can check this box to give them view only access to this folder. Once you've added all the users you'd like to add, click Save. This brings you back out to the main test co-authoring screen, and you can see that our new folder has been saved. From here, let's go ahead and create a new co-authored test. There are a few ways we could do this. We could just go to Create over here and create a manual test. We could also click Create New right here and create a new test this way. But for the sake of efficiency, I'm going to open up my folder we just made, and I'm going to create a new test directly inside this folder. We'll go ahead and fill in the basic test details like we usually would. We'll give it a name and select our subject and our grade level and then of course our standards and then we'll go find some standards that we want to tag for this assessment. We'll leave this as a My Classroom test. Since we're a teacher, we can only select My Classroom, and the rest of these default options are fine for our purposes. When we get down to the bottom, you can see that the co-authoring settings area is already expanded, but all the options are grayed out. Since we created this test directly from inside our folder, it's telling us that the co-authoring settings are already defined based on the folder. Now that we're done, we'll go ahead and generate our test. As usual, this brings us to the item editing screen for this test. We'll go ahead and throw a question on here. Now that we have an item, we've got the basic beginnings of a test. Let's go ahead and save this. And then we'll click Return to Test Details at the top right. This brings us back to the Test Details screen. It looks pretty normal, right, except for up here at the top. This banner says, first of all, that this test is locked for co-author edit. That means that the other co-author of this test cannot edit this test until we say we're done editing. You'll note that we also have a Move to Test Central button. Since I'm the teacher who created this exam, I can move it to Test Central at any time. Keep in mind, though, that if I move this exact test to Test Central, other co-authors will lose access to it. Since we're done for now, I'll go ahead and click Finish Editing. We now have our ninth grade exam in our ninth grade English exams folder, and both me and Teacher 3401 should have access to it. A few notes about creating and working with co authored assessments. Remember that once the test has been created, users will be directed to the test editing screen to add items. Only one co author can edit the test at a time. Co authors must exit the editing mode to unlock it for the other co authors. To administer a co-authored assessment, the best practice is to create a copy to move to the assessment dashboard. The original test will remain available to other co-authors within the co-authoring area. Let's shift gears just a little bit. We're now logged into SchoolNet as Teacher 3401. We got a text from our friend, the other teacher, saying that they had just saved a co-authored assessment. Let's go in and see if we can take a look. We'll expand the assessments area of the navigation and go to test co-authoring. We can see the ninth grade English exams that the other teacher made, so we'll open that folder. And inside we see the exam that the other teacher made. So we'll go ahead and open that exam. Since it's not being edited by anyone else, we get this nice edit test button up here, and it lets us know that that will lock the test and prevent others from editing. Note that we don't have a button now to move this test to Test Central. Since we're not in Edit Mode, it appears as a Copy Test button by default. Once we enter Edit Mode, it will become a Move to Test Central button. Let's go ahead and edit this test and add a few more questions.
And we'll also add some student instructions at the top. Now that we've spent some time making this test a little bit better, we'll go ahead and click Finish Editing. This will unlock the test so that other co-authors can work with it. We've now seen how two teachers can work together on an exam. But what if we also wanted to make this into a school-level benchmark? We can call in one of our district leaders to help us. From the Volder Details page, click Edit at the top right. And now we'll type in the name of our district leader. Just like before, the system will search for users by that name. And now we'll scroll to find the correct user that we want to add to this co-authoring folder. Here's district leader 1, so we'll add them to our co-authoring folder and click Save. The district leader account now has access to this co-authoring folder and therefore all exams within this folder as well. We're changing hats now just one more time. We are a district leader user now, and we got a text from one of our schools that some teachers have added me to a co-authoring folder and want me to turn their classroom co-authored test into a school-level assessment. We'll go into the assessments area and go to test co-authoring yet again. And we can see that folder that we made earlier and we can see that ninth grade English exam that these teachers want me to turn into a school level benchmark. So I'll click on the exam name to open up the test details page and just like before I get the same bar that allows me to edit or copy the test. Since I am a district leadership user I can now edit this test and I can go into the test properties and click Edit Properties. And we'll change this test court category from My Classroom to School Assessment. This is now a co-authored school assessment. From here, as the district leader, I can move it to Test Central to go ahead and recommend or assign it out to my schools, or I can click Finish Editing to unlock it for the other co-authors. Even though this is now a school assessment, these two teacher co-authors will still be able to make changes to the exam. If I'm ready to go ahead and schedule it, I can open up the exam again. And now I've got to make a decision. Do I want to remove this exam from Test Central entirely and then schedule it? Or do I want to make a new instance of the test? If I remove this from co-authoring and move it to Test Central, other co-authors will no longer be able to edit the test. Since we might want to reuse this test later on, I'm going to make a new copy and then I'll schedule that for the entire school. So I'll click Copy Test, and now it's making a new copy for me. We'll give this a more descriptive name. And then we'll go ahead and click Generate Test. Now we've got a separate copy of this co-authored test, so I'll go ahead and make it a public draft. And then I'll advance it to the Ready to Schedule phase. Finally, we'll go ahead and schedule this school assessment. We'll put in a start date, and since we're going to recommend this assessment, we'll just make the end date be the last day of school. And our score due date on June 4th will be just fine. Down in the assignment area, I'm going to recommend this to schools, and I'll apply the default assignment, which is to recommend it to all schools, there are 19 in this system, that have a grade 9. I could test, customize the test passcode if I wanted to. I think I'll leave it. I'll let the test display on the Take a Test widget. And finally, I'll go ahead and save and publish this test. We've now taken a co-authored assessment from a group of teachers, 
We've sent it on to a district leadership user. A school leadership user could do this as well. And then we've turned it into a school level benchmark. We then recommended it to all high schools in the district. Before we move on, let's talk briefly about applying this concept. While my example today involved two teachers co-authoring an assessment together, any type of SchoolNet staff user account can create and access co-authored assessments. This means teachers could collaborate with administration on school or district level benchmarks. A user with a leadership role can edit a co-authored test category from My Classroom to school benchmark or district benchmark without affecting access for teacher co-authors. Users can collaborate on assessments across a school, a district, or even the state. We'll talk more about some other possibilities toward the end. Let's shift gears now just a little bit. We've looked at how educators can create assessments together with co-authoring. But what if you just wanted to share a collection of test questions? This is possible using shared item banks. Teachers can create item banks to share with other teachers. Leadership users can create item banks to share with other leadership users, teachers, schools, or entire districts. Leadership users can also choose to grant different rights to everyone versus users with the test item administrator role to create protected item banks for district level assessments. The three levels of access are read only, view and edit, or manage. The manage access allows users to manage permissions to the item bank. I strongly recommend that all shared item banks have at least two users with manage rights in case of staff turnover. If the only manager of a given item bank retires, no other users will be able to manage that bank, and your school net lead will need to put in a ticket to see if our support team can grant manage rights to a different user. Let's take a look at how to create shared item banks in SchoolNet. I'm logged into SchoolNet again as the original teacher we were using at the beginning of this video. To create a shared item bank, we'll expand the assessments category in the left-hand navigation, then go to item banks. On this page, all the banks that we have access to are listed. At the top right, we can click Create a New Bank to make a new bank. Let's create a shared item bank with ninth grade math items, maybe. Now that we've entered a name and a description, we can think about our sharing settings. I think for now I'll just add my buddy, Teacher3401 in the other high school, to this item bank. We can add more people later on. To add a person, I'll click Add People. At the top, I can specify where I want to search for people. I can choose a specific school in the district, or I can search the entire district. I'm going to search the entire district since I know my buddy teacher is at a different school. I'll type in the other teacher's name, and just like before, the system will go out and search for users by that name. And here's my friend at High School 2744. I'll click his name to add him, and now I can set what rights this other teacher will have. He can have view only, view and edit, or manage. I'm going to go ahead and give this other teacher manage rights. That way they can add more people to this item bank later on if needed. Now that I'm done with my sharing settings, I can go ahead and create this item bank. If I scroll down a little bit, I can find that item bank and see that there are currently zero items, zero passages, and zero rubrics in it. It tells me who the owner is and when it was last modified. I can click the Manage link if I need to add or remove additional people. I can also delete the bank if there are no items saved in it. Let's go ahead and add an item to this item bank. We'll go find an item, and we'll just grab this first math question we see. To add an item to an item bank from a different item bank, we have to make a copy of the item. If we like this item, we can click the hamburger menu and view item details. From here, we'll click copy to make a new copy of this item, and we'll save it to that ninth grade math items item bank we just made. Keep in mind that since we're making a copy of this item, that means that it's now disconnected from the state level item. 
If the standards change in the future, we will have to realign this item on our own. Now we have our own copy of this item saved into our own item bank. If we go back to the item banks page, we can see that there's now one item in the ninth grade math item bank. We can click the item bank name to open it up and see what the items are. We can still click manage to add additional users. However, note that the delete button is no longer there. Let's take a look at what this looks like for the other teacher. I'm now logged into SchoolNet as teacher 3401. We got a text from our buddy at the other high school that they made a new item bank and they want us to take a look. Let's see if we can find it. Just like before, we'll expand the assessments category in the left-hand navigation, then select item banks. We should be able to find the item bank from the other teacher on this page. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we've got that ninth grade math items item bank that we made before, and we can see that item that we copied into it. Since we were given manage rights, we can also click manage to add or remove people from this item bank. For example, if teacher 2800 were to leave, I could make myself the owner and remove them from the item bank. I can also add additional people from here. Let's go ahead and add one of our principals to see what they think. We'll search the entire district and we'll find a principal user. Now that we've found our principal user, we can give them view and edit rights, view only, or manage. I'll go ahead and give this principal manage rights as well. And we'll click add people. Now we've added an additional manager to this item bank. I'll go ahead and click save to save those changes. Now our principal also has access to this item bank. We're now logged into SchoolNet as a school leadership user. We got a message from a group of teachers that they've been working on an item bank together and they want us to take a look. Let's see if we can find it. Yet again, we'll expand the assessments category and go to item banks. And scrolling down just a little bit, we see that same ninth grade math items item bank we've been working with. Just like before, we can open it up and see what's saved inside there. We could also add additional questions to this item bank if we wanted to. If we click the manage link, since again we have manage access to this bank, you'll notice there's something a little bit different. We now have an institutions button. Users with a leadership role can add entire institutions to an item bank rather than adding people one by one. Let's go ahead and add an entire institution to this item bank. By default, it's going to jump into our current school. So this is a school leader at elementary school 2737. I could click filter and assign it to different schools that I have rights to or to the entire district if I have rights. Down below that, we can decide what the rights should be. Right now, it's set up where everyone has view only access and users with the test item administrator role would have view and edit access at elementary school 2737. If we didn't want everyone to have access, we could uncheck everyone and not give them any access at all. We could also check everyone and give them view and edit access. Maybe we'd give test item administrators management access. There are a lot of different options here. For now, I'm going to just set this up as a view and edit for everyone. I'll go ahead and click add institutions to add view and edit for everyone at elementary school 2737. Now we can see we've got this item bank. We've got the two original teacher users that we added, the teacher that created it, and the teacher we added. We've got the leadership user that we added earlier. And now we've also got everyone at elementary school 2737. We can save this bank and know that all of these people now have access to work with this item bank. Let's briefly discuss how this concept could be applied. Consider the following scenarios. A group of teachers could collaborate on an item bank for use in classroom tests across the district. Perhaps a leadership user creates the bank, shares it with institutions, and allows teachers view and edit rights to that bank. A school could create an item bank that's curated by an entire academic department. Perhaps the English department would like to collaborate on test items together. One of the English teachers or a leadership user could create the bank and share manage rights with the other English teachers at the school or across the district. A district could create an item bank that's curated by curriculum leaders. A leadership user could create the bank and share manage rights with other curriculum leaders in the district.
They could either keep this bank private and use it to create district-level benchmarks, or they could grant read-only rights to all schools in the district so teachers can create their own tests using district-recommended or district-created test questions. We've now covered all of the most basic how-to items, but let's talk a little bit more about applying these concepts. There are many ways these features can be used together in a school or a district. First, users can create collaborative school or district benchmarks. One way this might work would be for a school or district leadership user to create co-authored test shells in a folder like we did earlier. They could add identified lead teachers as co-authors to these tests, who would then go in and begin building out the assessments. When complete, the district or school leadership user could then make a copy of the co-authored assessment to recommend or assign to the entire school or district. A different idea might be to allow teachers to create benchmarks. Teachers could begin by building benchmarks they'd like to administer within the co-authoring area. Once they're ready, they can move those assessments to a co-authoring folder called, for example, For Approval. A school or district leadership user could then review the co-authored assessments in that folder. Once approved, the assessment could either be moved to another co-authoring folder called Approved, or they could go ahead and schedule that benchmark for that teacher or the entire school or district. One more possibility might be our school library media coordinators. These incredibly dedicated folks are often go-to experts in their schools. A media coordinator could consider creating their own tests on topics of interest in SchoolNet within the co-authoring area. By request, they could then add teachers as view-only co-authors to individual tests or entire folders. Teachers could then pull copies of these assessments to use with their students. On the item bank side, one possibility might be a curated district item bank. The district curriculum department could create an item bank and enter test questions developed by the district. They could then add all their schools with view-only rights for everyone. Teachers across the district could pull from this bank for their classroom tests. Another item bank possibility? Subject area item banks. An academic department within a school or district could create shared item banks with at least two managers. They could then share this bank with teachers in that department with view and edit rights. Anytime one of those teachers creates a new question or finds a really good one in the state item bank, they could save it to their subject area item bank. Any current or future teachers in the school can now rely on this bank for items they know have been vetted by other teachers or administrators. This has been Collaboration in SchoolNet. I hope this has been helpful and has allowed you to see the power of SchoolNet when users collaborate. If you're watching this in Canvas, please be sure to mark this page as done at the top right, then complete the reflection activities to conclude the course and receive your CEUs. If you're joining us on YouTube, please check out the video description for additional helpful links and resources. As always, please let me know if I can be of any assistance as you continue to use SchoolNet in your school or district. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful rest of your school year.